Good morning and welcome to Longleaf Church. Uh, we're here in front of Freedom Crossing Academy doing our drive-in church yet again. And so we're so glad that uh, for those of you who are here in our parking lot today, that you're here. And for those of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, we're so very glad that each and every one of you are here worshiping with us this morning. I'm Chad Sorensen. I'm the worship lead for the traditional service, and I'm here to uh, help lead us in worship today. Uh, we're going to have a great day today. Um, if you are online on Facebook, do me a favor, go ahead and uh, post, say hello, and say hi to those that uh, you either know or even don't know on Facebook, uh, and enjoy a, a time of community and fellowship uh, as we can uh, through Facebook. Uh, so make sure that you do that. And after the end of the service, uh, please share this service. Uh, we've got a great message today, and I want to make sure that uh, we continue to spread the love of Christ uh, wherever we can. Um, so the church is in action this week. Uh, as you know, um, every, every morning, uh, somewhere around 7-ish, right, Paul, around 7-ish, we do a devotion service, uh, and it's either Daniel, uh, who's our worship lead, or Paula Corker-Jones, who is our uh, youth ministries director, and uh, they're providing a service uh, Monday through Saturday, uh, a short devotion uh, each morning. So we're uh, grateful for our church staff to be able to do that and provide that continuous message. Uh, as you know, Jeff is taking a family leave of absence, and during his absence, we've got a number of different folks who are helping us out. Today, the Reverend Rusty Hedges uh, will be bringing us the message and also leading us in communion. Uh, Rusty previously oversaw pastoral care and was part of the North Texas Conference. Uh, he and his wife Betsy have retired here, uh, and we brought him out of that retirement to be able to bring that message to us today, so we're glad that he is able to be here. Now I want to bring up Beth. Hastings. Beth is uh, head of our relaunch uh, as we get things going, and Beth has a couple announcements for us regarding that relaunch. Beth. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, first and foremost, um, I just want to thank all of you and uh, from, from myself and from the entire relaunch team for your support, for your patience, for your prayers. Back in March, when we worshiped together for the last time, we had no idea what was going to happen. March 9th, I looked at it this morning, because ironically, that was the day my husband and I became members of the church, and I, I just can't believe it's been that long. It, in, some, in some ways, it feels like it's been a blink, in others, it feels like it's been an eternity. And you know, we never knew when we formed these relaunch teams just how long we would be doing this and how complex and complicated everything with COVID was about to become. And we have been meeting faithfully and praying and prayerfully and working so diligently. And we just appreciate so much all of the support you all have shown us. We know it's been frustrating at times. We know so many of you want to be back together and we completely understand and we're right there with you. And I'm sure many of you saw the announcement that was shared on Friday in the Out Loud and the Buzz, a special edition that went out Friday morning. But for those of you that did not, I am so happy and excited to share that on September 27th, we are gonna move into what our phase two, which is outdoor in-person worship. We are so excited for this. It's actually gonna take place here at Freedom Crossing. You can't see it on the view, but to, to my right down here at the end of the building, behind the school is a very large courtyard uh, that we're gonna be able to use to bring all of you together. We'll be social distancing. We will be having using masks when needed. We will have all of the safety and CDC guidelines taken care of and we're just so excited to invite you to come and share with us on the 27th we are going to move that service back to nine o'clock so it's a little easier for our families with young children and also as we get closer to getting back to hopefully our normal worship times um, more information is going to be coming out in the coming weeks so stay tuned for that in the form of emails we're going to put stuff out on facebook website so a lot of great information to come so you guys are aware of everything. We want you to know exactly what to expect though when you do show up so you feel safe and comfortable doing so. And for those of you who still aren't comfortable in doing that, we get that too. And we will continue to live stream just as we have been. And we're continuing every week to find ways to improve this and to make changes to make quality of worship online even better for all of you. So we're super excited to share this and we hope that you are too. More information to come. But I will also share that today and the 13th will be our last days of drive-in worship as the 20th will be our rehearsal for our worship team and our leadership teams coming out to test the process here. So you'll see us live stream from the new space, but that's we're just going to do that as a test to make sure everything's good to go. So again, we'll communicate all this because there's a lot of information, but we hope you're as excited as we are. And again, thank you for your prayers. 
Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your support. We're so excited to see you all in person very, very soon. Thank you, Beth, and it's going to be a great and glorious time when we are all able to come back together. Now, as we move into our time of worship, I want you to ask, to, uh, I want to ask you to comment below and to respond to the following question. How has God remembered you? So if you just take a moment and comment below, how has God remembered you? Think about that and let us know. Now, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Holy Lord, the God that hears our prayers, you have said that you will be present whenever two or three are gathered in your name. We welcome your presence and grace in our lives. We ask that you manifest your glory today and shine your light on us. Through your light, we may illuminate the lives of those around us. As we feel your presence in worship today, may our knowledge of your divine mysteries continue to grow and change our lives forever. Amen. Amen. And now we will join together in our call to worship. We come to church hungry, Lord. We are hungry for comfort, hungry for love, hungry for a new way of living, and hungry for your word. Thank you for giving us this place and this time to worship. And we are eager to taste your goodness in community with our brothers and sisters. Bless us as we feast on the bread of life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the pain of 
love up all the lies I know you can make a way I have seen giants fall I have seen mountains move I have seen waters part because of you I remember I remember you have always been faithful to I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about your goodness, goodness. I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about your goodness, goodness. I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about your goodness, goodness. I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about, I can't stop thinking about your goodness, goodness. I remember. Thank you, Beth. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today with many concerns on our hearts, concern for our families, our health, and our friends. We come looking to you for answers, but often hear nothing in reply. We look to you to heal our communities and restore what we believe was normal. Lord, we know that through you all things are possible. Healing, reconciliation, the coming together of a community at odds with each other, and overcoming the fear of change are all possible because of you, Lord. This morning we pray for our church community. We ask that you are with those who are alone and long for a sense of community. We pray for the families of Longleaf as children have started back to school. We pray for their health and safety and for a great educational year. And we pray for the school employees and the teachers. We pray for the leaders of our church as they continue to develop plans for our, uh, our longed for return to in-person worship and pray for continued progress in dealing with this pandemic. We pray for the leaders of our community, our state and our nation, that they work together for the good of the people. Finally, Lord, we pray for those listening and watching our service today. Let your spirit come upon each and every one here and online as we worship you together, as we partake in Holy Communion, and as we remember the words that your son told us when he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, children. Well, hold on one second. Let me grab Ralph here because he's back with us this morning. Let's see here. Oh, everybody. How are you guys doing this morning? Huh? Hey, I wonder if there's anyone in the parking lot. Anyone out there in the parking lot today? Let me hear you. Hey, look at that. There's a bunch of people out in the parking lot. Uh, Chad, where were you last week? 
Uh, well, I was away on business, uh, Ralph. Oh, well, I thought you forgot about me. I didn't forget about you. I couldn't do that. Well, you know, sometimes during the middle of the week, I'm in a cold, dark place, and I don't get to see many people. Well, yeah, I understand that. So, uh, so you didn't forget about me? No, not at all. Um, so, uh, uh what, what, what were you worried about? Well, you know, I think sometimes maybe God forgets about me. Does he forget about me? Um, I, I don't think so, but you know what? I've got someone here who's going to talk to us today about that. Let's bring up Reverend Rusty. Hey, Reverend Rusty. Reverend Rusty. Hey, hey Rusty, Ralph. how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Hey, look, I look kind of rusty, don't I? You do. Yeah, you Daniel do. puts me in water every once in a while. <laughs> so, uh, so I have a question for you. Uh, does God remember me all the time? Yes, he does, Rob, all the time. I know that sometimes, um, you know, God has lots of things to do, lots of people to take care of. But that's the neat thing about God. God remembers everybody and remembers you, and and uh, he cares about you every day, even for the good days and on the bad days. Well, that, that that's pretty good, but what about when I feel alone? It feels like, like no one's remembering me. Well, sometimes, you know, your, your mom and dad, uh, they're busy. They're doing other stuff, and, and they have to take care of stuff. And it may not seem like they're paying much attention to you, but they always remember you. And remember that everything they do is for you to make to make life for your family better. So so even when mom and dad are busy and running around and, and dealing with this, this sickness that's going around, that that they're remembering me and doing it for me? Yes, they are. I and, know that they are. And and God's doing the same thing? And God's doing the same thing. Wow. Okay. Well, Mr. Chad, I, I think I was wrong. See, I told you, everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Hey, Pat, Rest, Reverend Rusty, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, it's good to see you, Ralph. Hey, it's good to see you, too. All right. So, uh, kids, just remember what uh, Reverend Rusty told us and uh, what Ralph is realizing here, that God's always there for us. Our parents are always there for us. And while things might be going crazy sometimes, that uh, uh, just remember, God remembers you. See you later, Mr. Chad. You're going to be here next week? I probably will be here next week. All right. See you later. All right. We love Ralph, and we thank Jeff for bringing Ralph to us, because uh, Ralph is always entertaining. We actually have no idea what Ralph is going to say each and every week. <laughs> so now is our time for offering. God is working through each and every one of you and through the entire congregation at Longleaf Church. Uh, as you know, our church is not closed. While we're not gathering together in person each week, the work still goes on. Uh, we thank you for your generosity and your support for allowing Longleaf to be able to continue that. Our missions ministry, our children's ministry, our youth ministry, the ministries of reaching out to those in our community, those all still happen. So we thank you for your support in making those happen. So you can uh, give in a number of different ways this week. Uh, you can go to longleafchurch.net and click on the Give tab, uh, and that will bring you to a, a site where you'll be able to do that. You can also give by simply texting to the number 77977, the words Longleaf Church SJC. That's 77977 and Longleaf Church SJC. And you can give a one-time gift or you can set up a recurring gift. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Faithful Father, thank you that you give the gifts of abundant and eternal life. You've said that you are a good father, who gives us good gifts. Your generosity overflows to us and everything we have is a gift from you. As we bring you our offerings, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given to us. May our gifts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power and strength be unto our God forever and ever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, and now Reverend Rusty will uh, bring us our message today. I'm going to have to ask your indulgence. I have uh, some back problems from time to time, and uh, this is one of the times I'm having them. So, uh, if you'll allow me, I want to. I'm going to sit um, through this sermon. As, he, as Chad said, I'm, my name is Rusty Hedges, and uh, I'm a ordained minister in the United Methodist Church, retired. But it is a privilege for me to be here today and to worship with you here at Longleaf Church. You know, there's a saying among the rabbis that uh, for people with, without imagination, God makes rules. But for people with imagination, God makes stories. And so I want to focus on one of the most well-known stories in the Old Testament this morning. Um, the story about Noah and the ark and the flood. That's a story that is common in, the, in that part of the world. There were other cultures uh, that had flood stories. And uh, I think in that time, a, a time when uh, just about all history was oral, stories that were told uh, by different people, that the flood story was accepted as understood as, about, as a historical event. And so the Hebrews adopted that story and, uh, and combined it and worked it into their belief about what they had come to know about the God of, of history. Um, it's in that story that after the creation uh, that things have gotten steadily worse. Um, we've got the story of the creation, and then of Adam and Eve, and then uh, the, the disobedience that takes them out of the garden, the stories of Cain and Abel. Uh, we've gone from disobedience to murder, and things are just getting worse. And so finally God decides that the best thing to do is just to start over. It's interesting to me that God is not, not suggested in the story as being angry. God doesn't just lose his temper one day that this is the decision that he comes to, and I, I think it's, a, it's with sadness and grief that he decides, I'm just going to have to start over. The creation that was done with such care has become a big mess. And so God starts over. He brings a flood that washes away everything. But he tells a, a, an individual, Noah, that he needs to build an ark. It's interesting that in Hebrew, uh, there's, a, there's a word for boat, but that's not what it says. There's a word for ship, but that's not what he says either. What Noah builds is an ark. And if there are any uh, fans of uh, Harrison Ford out there uh, that remember Raiders of the Lost Ark, you probably know what an ark looks like. It's a box. That's it. It's a great big box. This is not a story about Noah the sailor. 
because the ark doesn't have any sails it doesn't have any oars it doesn't have a rudder it does not even have a keel it's just a big wooden box filled with Noah and his family and a world full of animals tossed about on a sea uh, with all the chaos and the confusion that you could possibly imagine. And what little we know around here in Florida about hurricanes, Noah would have learned very, very well. This is a story of creation undone, creation in reverse. It's everything coming apart. I want to read from the seventh chapter, um, beginning at the uh, 19th verse. The story says that the, that the waters prevail so mightily upon the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed above the mountains, covering them 15 cubits deep, and all flesh died that moved upon the earth. Birds, cattle, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm upon the earth, and every man, everything on the dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life, died. He blotted out every living thing that was upon the face of the ground, man and animal and creeping things and birds of the air. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left and those who were with him in the ark and the waters prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Bad news. But where does that leave Noah? Noah's alive. He's in the ark. He has his immediate family with him, his, his wife and his children. But think about Noah's position. He's lost everything. He's lost his home. He's lost his friends. He's lost his extended family. All of the places that he's known since he was born. All the people that he's lived with, lived around, his neighbors. Everything that he has ever known is gone. This is the ultimate worst case scenario. But then in the midst of all of this chaos, and that's what it is, chaos, we hear a different word at the beginning of the eighth chapter. As this next chapter begins, it says, but God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind blow over the earth and the waters subsided. God remembered Noah. In the midst of this terrible catastrophic event, God is still remembering Noah. Now that's the good news of this story, but there's bad news too. And the bad news is the people were just the same. They hadn't changed a bit. The story goes on to say that when the, the ark finally got to, to dry land, what did Noah do? The first thing he did was plant grapes. And as soon as the grapes started to grow, he used them to make wine. Then he got drunk and he started to fight with his family. What are we going to do with these people? God realizes that humans are just as bad as before. But then God makes a momentous decision. God decides that never again will he destroy the earth. Never again will there be a flood that will wipe out the life on the, on the, on the earth. And it's a reminder, actually a reminder to himself, but a reminder to us as well. God places a sign in the heavens. He puts a bow in the clouds. Now when we read this story, we think of a rainbow. Something pretty. Something beautiful. Something that looks really good in stained glass. But in that time, in that world, in which this story was written. It wasn't a rainbow, it was a bow. And a bow is a weapon of war. A bow is what you use to fight. 
and to kill. So God is hanging up his weapon, hanging it, hanging it up in the sky where everybody can see so that everyone will know that God has renounced violence against the earth, against humanity. I, I think about this and I, I, I imagine a, a western movie you know, where the town sheriff hangs up his guns where everybody can see them as a sign to the town that he's renouncing violence. But we know that if this was Hollywood, sooner or later the sheriff would have to go get his guns back and shoot the bad guys. But God's bow, the rainbow, is still in the clouds. That sign is still present that says that God will not do this again. We're not about to be swept away in some kind of massive flood, but we are living in chaotic times, and we all know that. The election, the virus, the economy, the racial divisions, some days, perhaps lots of days, it feels like our world is coming apart, like the very ground that we stand on is shaking. I had a conversation with one of my neighbors just this week, and he told me that his wife had lost her job. The company that she had worked for for a number of years is going out of business. And so here in the midst of everything else, she finds herself unemployed. Now her husband still has a job, but they've got two small children. And I'm sure the loss of her income is going to make a difference. But her story is hardly unique. We all know people who have been sick, who have been affected by the, down, the coming down of the economy that have been furloughed or laid off or uh, we're feeling economic pressure and political pressure and all the things that are going on. But the good news of Noah's story is that in the midst of absolute chaos, and that's what the flood story is about, absolute chaos, that God remembered Noah and God remembers us. We can't see it. It's not visible to us in the midst of all the challenges that we face. But God is thinking about us. God is remembering us. And even now, God is creating a future for us. And it doesn't matter how foolish or how selfish or how disobedient we are at times, and we, and we are, God has decided that we're worth keeping. And we have a guarantee of that. I want to share a, a, a personal rainbow story. Uh, when I finished seminary, my, my wife and by that time three kids uh, were living in a little two-room apart, two-bedroom apartment uh, on the campus at SMU. And I remember that last spring as I was trying to finish my seminary education, trying to write that last paper, and at the same time, waiting to hear something about an appointment, where my, where my first job would be. And finally, I got that word, and then we started, we had to scramble to find a house uh, to rent, and we had to pack up all our stuff, and we had to get moved, and, and all of this stuff. It was a very chaotic time in our family. And I remember that I went back to the campus after we had moved all the stuff from our apartment. I had to turn in the keys to the housing office uh, for the student housing. And I went back, picked up the last box at the apartment. I went by and dropped off the keys. And then I headed away from the campus back toward the freeway that would take me north of Dallas to, our, to, to the first church I was going to serve. And as I made that turn, to go toward the freeway, I looked up in the east and there was a beautiful rainbow that went all the way across the sky. I don't know if anybody else saw that rainbow or not that day, but I claimed, I took it. I claimed it as my own personal rainbow 
God put it there today, that day for my benefit, in my opinion, because it was a sign. God that was saying, you are headed into a future that you don't know, and you may not be able to imagine, and there will be difficulties and there will be triumphs, but I want you to know we're going to go together. That wherever you go, whatever you face, whatever endure, you must endure or celebrate, God is with us, God remembers us, we are never alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rusty. I'm going to move this chair so we don't trip sure. over. Sure. Okay. All right. You can perfect. do that. Thank you. Yeah, we're all good right now. Uh, here, we're going to take a couple steps backward here. I know, I know. That way we can be able to see the camera here and they can see the top of our heads. All right. Let us begin the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we, many as we are, are one body. And when we break the bread, is it not a means of sharing in the body of Christ? And when we give thanks over the cup, is it not a means of sharing in the blood of Christ. 
blood that was shed for you and for all the world. So for those of you who are at home and have prepared elements yourself, please take the body of Christ that is broken for you and the blood shed for you. And for those of you who are in drive-in church, you each have individual communion cups. There is a small piece of plastic on top. Pull that off first and you'll be able to get to your communion wafer. And then open up the juice cup and be able to take Christ's blood, which has been shed for you. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go in the into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Rusty. I want to thank you for being part of our service today. Gabrielle, could you actually come here one second? I want to make sure we get the... She's got a sign here that she's been showing everyone else uh, in our parking lot today. Um, but uh, as you know, while we're up here, we're, we're distancing ourselves from each other. But Gabrielle has a message for us. Look at this. Why don't you tell us what we have? Good morning, everyone. 
everyone, don't forget uh, we are selling uh, these nice, wonderful, long leaf church masks. And uh, the donation is $10, and uh, proceeds from that will go towards missions and specifically Rise Against Hunger. Um, so if you haven't gotten your mask yet, you can order it online. Um, it will be linked on the missions page or on the Lonely Facebook page. I can put it up there or just send me an email at missions at mumc.net. Uh, when we gather together, which will be really soon, it'll be super exciting to see everyone wearing their wonderful long leaf mask, or you can wear it out wherever you are um, and share the wonderful message about the great things going on in our church. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. So folks, please um, uh, please uh, share this video with, uh, with your friends on Facebook. It'd be wonderful to be able to get that message out to everyone. And now let us receive our benediction from uh, Reverend Rusty Hedges. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ go with you, remain with you, now and always. Amen. Amen.